everybody, my name is Annika and today I'm going to tell you about my Valentine's Day from heck with dramatic reenactment. For this story, I have a bunch of notes written out on my phone that I'm basically going to read through because if I didn't put my thoughts in order, I would be all over the place, even more than I am now. So this happened when I was 16. I was a junior in high school and I was in a not so great relationship. He was disrespectful, rude, and all around a horrible person and he reminded me a lot of my father, so it felt right at home. <laughs> so it's Valentine's Day and I'm at school talking to some friends about what happened on the latest episode of Secret Life of American Teenager before the bell rings. Here comes my boyfriend. We'll call him Dan for the remainder of this story. Dan comes walking up to me and says, Happy Valentine's Day. And I say it back and give him a little gift bag full of his favorite candies and whatever, things that he likes. And Dan gave me a hug. And I was like, Okay, um, where's my present? So Dan, literally said, Don't worry, I have a surprise plan for you later, and you're gonna get it. All my friends start laughing. So I was like, what's so funny? He just said he had a surprise. And my friend, we'll call her Jess, is like, he's gonna give you that dick. So I replied by being super grossed out and saying, ew, why would you say that? That's nasty. And Jess is like, you know, like, well, what do you think he means by get it? Like, you know, don't be stupid. All of my adult knowledge has come from watching The Secret Life of an American Teenager at this point. Sorry about your dad, but you know it had nothing to do with us. And I know it's a shock, and I feel terrible for you and your family, but we didn't do it. He didn't die because you and I had sex. Yes, he did. I was super sheltered. I went to a private Christian school for most of my life until I went to a public high school. So. I was shocked when I got there by some of the things I learned and saw. So I really didn't know anything about anything, to be honest. I was extremely naive and most things went right over my head. So as the day goes on, I'm getting more and more frustrated because I'm seeing all these girls with their boyfriends all happy and laughing and co-parenting their newly gifted giant stuffed bears and stuffed dogs. But all I got for Valentine's Day was a hot steaming pile of disrespect. So now it's lunchtime, and here comes Dan and his friends. So Dan told me what he has planned for you tonight. Are you ready? Are you? What? Exactly! So now lunch is over, and I spend the rest of the school day slowly building up this inner rage. This dude thinks he can just do the devil's dance with me without even asking me if I want to? Heck no! I'm gonna go over and sabotage everything. I'm gonna get him back for embarrassing me all day. Just healthy high school relationship things. <laughs> So I go over to Dan's house after school and he's like, follow me. He leads me to his room. I'm mentally preparing myself to go the fuck Ooh. off on this dude for trying to give it to me when I don't want it. So I step into his room and he has lit tea candles everywhere, all over the floor, on his dresser, even the line on his bed, which is so dangerous, but he doesn't follow me inside. As soon as I take a few steps into his room, he slams the door and locks it. I am now trapped in his room, which is not only creepy, but now it's a major fire hazard. So I carefully turn to face the door because there are literally candles everywhere. But as I turn the door handle, like it's jammed, it won't open. This dude moved something against the door. Like he had it all planned out. He freaking moved something against the door so I could not open it. I literally could not leave because you know, he can't lock the door from the outside, but he trapped my ass in his room. As I'm, you know, fidgeting with the door, I'm like yelling for Dan and yelling for his mom because I know she's home and just saying like, hey, um, why am I locked in this room right now? Like, why? Hello? Hello? Can you let me out? And then Dan yells back to just sit down, relax, and get ready. And I was like, get ready for what? No, thank you, sir. I'd like to return this surprise, please. Not interested. So I call up my friend Jets. Hello? Jess, he locked me in his room. I'm at Dan's house right now. I'm locked in his room. There's literally like a thousand candles everywhere. He has them laid out. What do I do? Like I, he moved furniture in front of his door. He led me to his room and I'm stuck in there. He won't let me out. What do I do? Wait, wait, wait. So he just lit some candles for you? Yes, there's candles I mean, everywhere. That like, romantic. No, it's not romantic. Look, I'm gonna send you a picture. I'm gonna send you a picture. Okay, did you get it? That's so sweet. It's not sweet. It's creepy. He locked me in his room. Do you hear me? What do I do? 
Well, if you're that freaked out, find yourself a weapon. Oh my god, he's coming. If, if you don't hear back from me for, by 10, call my mom. So now I hear footsteps in the furniture that was once against the door being pushed along wood floor. So he's letting me free. And Dan has this big old creepy grin on his face and he's like, follow me. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> this is it. It's fight or flight. So he leads me out of his room through the hallway to his kitchen and sitting on his kitchen island are two plates of brains. I'm just kidding. It was spaghetti and like sauce dumped on top. As we're eating our tomato sauce with a side of pasta, <laughs> Dan's like, this is just the beginning of our night together. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we ate our spaghetti and then Dan pulled another follow me. This time we went into the movie slash game room, basically just another living room that was closed up by French doors. And when he opened the door, there was his mother just standing there next to a small table, literally just standing there, <laughs> like waiting. Dan's mother pulled out the chair for me and I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Um, how long have you just been standing here? And she's like, wait here. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Family's full of surprises, I guess. There's Dan and I just sitting at this little table, awkwardly looking at each other, waiting to see what's gonna happen next. And here comes his mom with two cupcakes and she places the cupcakes in front of us. And then she leaves the room and closes the French doors behind her. Dan's like, I made her make these for you. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's so nice of her. Like she really didn't have to do all of that. And Dan's like, yes, she did. Don't get too full though, because we have a dessert after this dessert. A few minutes go by and I'm kind of just playing with my food because teenage me was way too nervous and anxious to eat. And during this whole time, I'm still trying to plan back, you know, how am I gonna get revenge or sabotage his surprise, you know, when, I don't know, I didn't prepare, I didn't think this through before coming over here and now I'm in a really uncomfortable situation. After a few minutes, Dan gets up to dim the lights and he turns on some music. Then he comes over and pulls another run of the Follow me. But this time I just followed him a few steps away from the table. Dan's like, dance with me. Dance? Yeah, dance with me. The devil's dance or like the chicken dance? You want to dance? Dance, dance, or is that like a code for oral sex? Oh, okay. Dance, dance. Well, I couldn't dance with you at homecoming because I couldn't stand up. Dan goes on to explain that he couldn't dance with me at our school's homecoming a few months prior because watching me wholesomely do the Cupid shuffle made Dan's pickle rise if you know what I'm saying. So Dan wanted to make up for it by dancing now at his house after he locked me in his room and forced his mom to play waitress. <laughs> we start to dance, leaving plenty of room for Jesus, you know, between us. <laughs> and as for dancing, Dan says, Uh-oh, my pants just got tight. So I'm like, oh, you probably just ate too much. I always have to unbutton my pants every time I eat like Thanksgiving or like a huge meal. When you eat too much and you're just so bloated and you got a little food baby, I, have to make some more room for your food baby. So you, you don't do that top button and throw your shit over it. That's, you know, that's what I was thinking in my naive brain. So Dan's like, that's not why they're tight, but I'll unbutton them. Maybe you should unbutton them for me. And I'm like, uh, why? And at this point, our zombie shuffle slow dancing has led me to face the French doors. And I literally see Dan's mom just watching us. Her face is pressed up against the French door, like looking in, like, you know, doing one of these numbers, just watching us with the weirdest smile on her face, literally just, just watching us zombie shuffle dance. She, like, she's just literally watching her son harass me at this point. I'm like, can you help me out? Hello, hello? Rude. Speaking of rude, cupcake, I'm telling a story time. <laughs> so Dan's like, just ignore her. She doesn't care what goes on and she knows it's Valentine's Day. And I'm like, what does that even mean? What are you trying to do? And Dan literally looks at me and says, you, what? Like, well, at least he's honest, right? So at this point, I'm like, okay, that's enough. Like, I wanna go home. All I wanted for Valentine's Day was a giant stuffed dog. I didn't ask to be locked in a room or harassed by you or watched by your mom. Like this whole day has been super weird and I'm ready for it to be over. I want to go home. So Dan's like, but I planned this entire night for you. I thought girls wanted their first time to be romantic. I lit candles. I gave you a cupcake. What else was I supposed to do? And I was like, I'm going to call my mom and then I'm going to call the police. <laughs>
So then Dan's like, okay, fine, leave then. I'll unlock the door for you. And I'm just like, why do you keep locking me in all these rooms in your house? <laughs> this is not how you treat guests. You don't lock them in. <laughs> so Dan and his mom take me home. Um, that car ride was awkward. And when I finally got home, I thanked his mom for going out of her way to cook for me and drive me home. You know, I, I appreciated it. As good as it, it was, it, I appreciate the effort she put into the evening. <laughs> and then I thank Dan for trying to make Valentine's Day special, even though he had bad intentions behind it, which, you know, led his mom to ask Dan right there, like, what does she mean by that? So I slammed the car door and ran my ass inside and, you know, let them deal with that in their car on their own time because they wasted enough of mine. <laughs> the next day was a school day because it was, you know, during the week. And I was greeted by all of our mutual friends asking, So did Dan give it to you? And I was like, well, if give it to you means locked me in his room for an hour while he made his mom cook me cupcakes. Yeah, but we didn't do the devil's dance, if that's what you're wondering. Reliving it and talking about it, it's like so weird to me. That whole situation is so, so weird. So if you're wondering like, you know, why did I put up with all that and not leave as soon as he locked me in his room the first time? Like, I don't know, I just, I felt bad because I was like, well, maybe he's trying to make it special and maybe it's, maybe he's not really trying to, you know, do the nasty or anything. I don't know, I just wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt and I, you know, I don't know. I know better now, okay, I'm an adult lady, so if someone locks me in their room now, like, I'm gonna get the hell out of there. <laughs> That's it. That's my worst Valentine's Day ever. I have a lot of high school horror stories, and I was also in band all four years of high school, so I have a lot of band camp stories. So if you want to hear some band camp stories or other high school stories or just other stories like this, let me know. Give the video a like and subscribe. And if you're feeling extra spicy, hit the notification bell. And if you don't want to do all that, then you don't have to. <laughs> I appreciate you being here. Also, if you have a story that you would like to share on this channel, please feel free to share it in the Discord. I have it linked in the description. If you go to the Discord under the Storytime Share tab, put whatever stories you want me to read for you. You could literally share anything, okay? Suspense, comedy, romantic comedy, horror, I don't know, I'm just naming off movie genres, but you know what I mean. Whatever you want to share on this channel, leave it in the Discord. I was using Instagram before to like get all your stories and read them on here, um, but it got really messy and overwhelming and now I just try not to go on Instagram because it's like, I, I, and it makes me feel bad about my body. <laughs> um, so now I use Discord. <laughs> okay. Say bye bye. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. And have a wonderful day and have a happy Valentine's Day. Don't let your date lock you in their room. That's not nice. <laughs> okay, bye.